Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In this episode, I'd like to show you the routing matrix. Reaper has several different ways to route tracks into and out of other tracks, as well as hardware inputs and outputs. The routing matrix offers a convenient way to control your track routing. Let's take a look. Typically when I'm recording my drums, I use a template that I've set up that already has each track routed to the correct input on my audio interface. To load that template, I'll right click in the track control panel, go to insert track from template, and I'll choose Mike Robinson Drums. As you can see, this template is already set up with each track named, and as we said, each one of the tracks is routed to the correct input. If you're not familiar with how to create track templates, click the link above. Let's get rid of these tracks for now. Now if I create a blank track, by default, Reaper has that track set to record from the first input on your audio interface. My audio interface is a Roland Studio Capture and I've got 16 inputs. If I create multiple tracks, I'll have to go and right click the record arm button on each track and select my input manually. This works, but in my opinion it could be a little bit sluggish and the routing matrix is much more convenient. Let's delete these tracks and I'll start over again and recreate my drum template. I'll right click in the track control panel and choose insert multiple tracks. In this case, I'll be using 12 different mics, so I'll put in 12 and OK. I'll rename each of my tracks. And thanks to the magic of video editing, we've got those tracks renamed quickly. You can see I've got my 12 tracks here. I've got kick, snare top and bottom, three toms, hat and ride mics, overhead hat side, overhead ride side, and I've got stereo room mics on both the hat and ride side as well. As we said earlier, the default for Reaper is to choose the first input on your audio interface for each new track. Needless to say, I do not want to record all 12 tracks from input 1 on my interface because that's my speaking mic. Now we can go to each track, right click record arm, and go to input mono, and I can select any one of my 16 inputs, but as we said, that's a little bit cumbersome. Let's take a look at the routing matrix. We'll go to view and routing matrix, or alt R is the default key press for that. Now this can look a little bit confusing at first, but we'll break it down and make it make a little bit more sense. Across the top, we can see the named tracks. I've got 1 through 12, as well as my master track. We can also see those same 12 tracks on the left-hand side. And then down below, I've got each of my 16 inputs. Here in this column, we can see that my kick track is currently routed to track 1, as is the snare top, snare bottom, and all other tracks. That needs to change. I know that I've got my kick mic plugged into input number 7 on my interface, so under column 1 for my kick track, I'll go down on the list, and here is my input number 7. I'll left click there, and track number 1 is now set to record input 7. My snare top is on input 5, so under my snare top column, I'll do the same thing except I'll choose 5. My snare bottom is on input 6, so I'll click there. Now in this lower section, you can see that it'll only allow you to choose one input at a time. If I click anywhere else, it's not going to let me have more than one input on a track. Let's go back and correct these. We've got my kick on 7, snare top on 5, snare bottom on 6, my rack tom is on input 8, so I'll click there, tom 2 is on 9. You'll notice that as I mouse over each of these inputs, I've got a pop-up that tells me which column I'm under, so I don't have to keep going up top and trying to follow this trail downward. Tom 3 is on input 10. My hat and ride mics, I just recently started using those again, so they're a little bit out of sequence. My hat mic is plugged into input 4. My ride mic is plugged into input 3. Now I've got my overheads on hat side and ride side. You can name these whatever you like. A lot of people like to use left and right for their stereo drum mics. I choose to use hat and ride. That way there's no concerns for left or right because that may vary depending on whether you're mixing from the drummer's perspective or from the audience perspective. My overhead hat mic is on input 11 and my overhead ride side is on input 12. My stereo room mics are next in sequence with input 13 going to the room mic hat side and input 14 going to the room mic ride side. Now so long as you know where you're going to be routing these tracks, this is much quicker than right clicking each of these tracks individually then selecting the input from the list that pops up. Let's take this a step further. Let's close the routing matrix. Now we know that in Reaper we can create a folder track to contain each of these tracks. I've got a key press bound to an action to do that where I can select all of these tracks, hit my key press, that'll create a folder and present me with a dialog to name that folder. I'll call this drums. And now we can see that all of my drum tracks are routed into this drum folder. If we take a look at the routing matrix again, you'll notice the change here. Previously each of these tracks was sending to the master, but now they're sending to the parent folder and the folder track is sending to the master. I'll close the routing matrix and undo that step to take them back to their previous state. So now each of these is sending to the master again. Folder tracks are great for creating submixes and also for organization since you can collapse the folder to give you a little bit more room in the mix control panel. 
but sometimes you may want to have a track to control other tracks that's not a folder. We can accomplish that through the routing matrix as well. I'll create a new track, call it drums. One way to do this would be to hold down Alt and click the routing button on a track that disables the send to master, and then I can left click and drag from the routing button to the desired track, and now the kick track is sending to the drums track. But just as when we were creating our inputs for the tracks, this can take a very long time. Let's open the routing matrix again by clicking Alt-R, and we can see now that our kick track is no longer sending to master, but instead it's sending to the drums track. Let's disable the master send on the remaining tracks. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard, click the first track, and just drag my mouse down, and that's deselecting the master send on each of those tracks. Now under the drums column, which is my track 13, I can left click and drag down, and each of these tracks is now sending to track 13. I'll close the routing matrix and click the route button on track 13, and we can see that each of those tracks is now being sent to track 13 post fader. So as you can see, the routing matrix helps to save you a lot of time when you're controlling your track routing in Reaper. I hope this helps. If you enjoy the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. I like coffee.